everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to the channel, we're having a great day. Today, we are in Johnson Valley area and we're joining the Chevrolet team to get a first look experience with the brand new Colorado ZR2 Bison. This is gonna be the pinnacle off-road variant from the Colorado series you can buy. It takes the upgrades from the ZR2, but then adds even more off-road flair. And I mean literal flair because Chevrolet has worked with AEV American Expedition vehicles to create a lot of cool upgrades for the ZR2. You can see firsthand some of them on the front and then towards the sides of the vehicle. There's a lot going on in this video. I'm going to take you on a tour of this new Bison and then we're going to take it out to see how it performs out here in the desert. So let's do it. As I mentioned earlier, we are in the middle of nowhere with the ultimate Chevrolet Colorado. Now, this is straight from Chevy. This is built to conquer any terrain, the Bison, which is loaded with those AEV upgrades, those enhancements, basically take the performance that you're getting out of the ZR2 and elevates it to the next level. This midsize pickup truck scene has been growing quite rapidly. When the Colorado first came out in 2017, it was a different offering in, in the segment. Now we're finding so many competitors out there in the market. I think the Chevrolet team knew they had to bring it up a notch even more. I have to say right away, I'm a big fan of the styling for this Colorado. The beauty of it is that it's a truck that doesn't intimidate you with size. Sometimes some of these off-road vehicles can feel a bit too big where you don't really want to tackle some of these trails because of the rocks or other uh, debris that can impact and, and damage it. A lot has been done to the suspension work, also to the visual styling. Let me point that out to you right now. Right away, moving to the front end of the vehicle, you do have the ZR2 styling for the, the front bumper, having the massive wide blackened uh, front grills, plus the flow tie right here in the middle. This is such a funny offer even maybe to me because I remember seeing it on the Chevrolet Camaro Z28 a few years back, actually many years back when it debuted. It was a big deal from the Chevrolet team and it makes sense. It may not seem like you would get a lot more airflow with a hole that is, you can see right here, maybe like an inch or two tall and a couple inches wide. Trust me, anywhere you can find the opportunity to bring more air towards the front radiators, it will help a lot for cooling. So the front of bow tie is now a flow tie. It is fully functional for the off-road terrain. You do have the standard ZR2 badging. Luckily, I pulled out the clean a ZR2 Bison because the other ones out here are pretty sandy. With this package, you are getting a ton of AEV upgrades, such as this steel stamped lower front impact point for the lower bumper. This is solid steel and it just shows you all the off-road inspiration thrown on this vehicle. Underneath, you have full boron skid plates from the entire front section all the way to the mid to the rear, protecting the transfer case and more. This is going to be a big upgrade on top of the ZR2, which features standard aluminum. I do like the red tow hooks right here in front of us next to those Multimatic DSSV dampers. This vehicle is featuring the latest generation of the Multimatic DSSV uh, shocks from the Chevrolet team. What all is going into that? Well, it has new uh, jounce control. I got a shot of one of these uh, damper systems from inside there little base camp over here. Let me show it to you right now. The main idea with this spool valve system is that within the shocks there are three separate spools and they've adjusted with the damper to give you extra control and composure for the entire chassis of the vehicle when it comes to taking on these dips and even ramps. I'm excited to find out how this suspension system works because they're really touting it as a straight off the showroom floor toy that the capability is much higher than anyone would really expect. Coming to the hood, you do have the ZR2 Bison black matte hood extension in the middle to enlarge it to give you more of an aggressive look. I can't wait to get, uh, get inside to see how that actually feels. Moving to the sides, the AEV upgrades continue to the front fenders with these plastic extensions and it seems like they wouldn't be too expensive to uh, afford for replacement, I'd say. 
I like how it's not a full body fender that is extending out because these will be hit by twigs, uh, branches, sometimes maybe even rocks. You want it to be durable yet not cost an arm and a leg to, to fix. The biggest thing for the stance of this Colorado uh, ZR2 Bison is going to be the extension of the front track, the wheelbase, to give you the 35 uh, capability for the tires. This is a big upgrade that so many people have been waiting to see for a Chevrolet truck. And I'm very excited they've done it. Everyone loves bigger, more aggressive tires. This has got a Goodyear Wranglers, 17 inch a wheel in the center, a 35 inch tall tire on the outside. This should grip well, I think, once we air it down. That's the main goal. I believe we're going to around 25 PSI. Uh, the AEV upgrades don't just stop here because not only do you have the beadlock capability, as you can see in the center, but moving on to the sides, you have more powerful uh, protection guardrails going all the way to the rear of the vehicle. Interestingly, you almost have a 37 degree angle of approach for this new ZR2 Bison. You can see right away how high up this front bumper is. I think for a climbing over rocks and taking some of these uh, bumps for the jounce to test it out, uh, this is gonna work perfectly. Moving to the side of the truck, as you'd expect, similar to a standard a Colorado, most of the upgrades, again, have been focused on the suspension with all the upgraded reinforcement points and then giving you more reliability with a spare tire and wheel assembly fully mounted into this bed. The spray-in bed liner is completely standard. <laughs> Being inside, I'm sure having that wheel and tire is gonna block rear visibility by a significant amount. You gotta admit though, this looks like it's been designed by a team of people who are enthusiasts. Finally, moving to the rear end of the vehicle, the AEV special badging extends to the very end with a special steel stamped rear bumper kit all the way down low. Compared against other off-road pickup trucks, you won't have the same level of versatility, I think, that you will have here. Having the body not being too big and massive, it's gonna feel most likely more nimble. So let's get inside and find out how it performs. Let's get inside and see what has changed. Obviously, you do have the yellow stitching with the gray slash green accents for the soft touch leather components of the ZR2 variants. We have it beeping away. Let me go ahead and get inside. Let's give a good first startup, shall we? Down below to the right, you have the engine start button. Okay, okay, not too loud. Ignore the uh, lights. This is a prototype vehicle I've pulled away because it's the only clean one right now. The other ones I'll be driving shortly will be a bit dusty. <laughs> I'm a big fan of all these displays and I'm pretty sure you will be too because as you can see here, we have three complete display settings. Right here you have Baja giving you G-forces for where your record is and what you're looking like for the shift. To the right, you have steering angle. If I turn the wheel, it'll change. In the moment, you have 8%, 11% back to about one or zero. Right now, we have the transfer case selected on two wheel drive. All the drive controls will be right here next to the transmission selector. You have four low, four high, and then two wheel drive. Yes, you can do a burnout or slide the tail end around if you do want to. Let me show you the terrain settings. Clicking to the right, it gives you a really cool and futuristic uh, display of the truck on this rotating axis for pitch and roll to give you an exact view digitally uh, through the software where the truck is in a rotation. So this will be lifted up or to the left, depending on your pitch or the roll. And then finally to the far right, this one has the tires aired up normally to about 36 PSI, front 38, and then mid 30s in the rear. We're gonna lower PSI to about mid 20s for these off-road tests. Aha, it gives us our exact uh, GPS coordinates and it tells us exactly how many uh, feet up we are with the altitude. We're currently 2,500 feet in the sky. Overlanding is the final setting you have to play with. This gives you a compass to show you what's north, south. We're facing southeast right now, here next to the King of the Hammers location. <laughs> to my right, a bigger graph showing you uh, the feet of altitude we are dealing with. Other than that, this display is similar to what you get with standard Chevrolet performance vehicles or truck, the pickup lines. I will be using the 360 degree cameras extensively for this journey. You have options to enlarge the front view, 
even to see towards the back, also giving you a 360 degree view around the vehicle. For rocks and different debris on the side of the road, you can check your steering input and dodge the rocks in the moment. You have a view for the front and the back. Finally, 360 degrees right there. For amenities, you do have the Bose sound system with the ZR2 badging having the camouflage effect right next to it. I love not being intimidated by the size of the truck. I'm excited to see how it performs out here. When it comes to the payload, uh, you're about 1,050 pounds for maximum payload. And then for towing, you're going to cap out at about 5,500 pounds using the 2.7 liter uh, turbo four cylinder having 310 horsepower. The transmission is gonna stay the eight speed automatic, though with the uh, four wheel drive and all the off-road capability, I think it's gonna work very well together. This right now is aimed currently at, I'd say the Ranger Raptor, the TRD. Uh, is it gonna be the better buy? Time is gonna tell. Our impressions are gonna probably help. Let's see. So right here, they're testing out terrain mode, which is enabling the one pedal drive. The second you let off on the gas, it's gonna stop driving. And they're trying to show the, uh, the 36 degrees of uh, approach angle that you have for the truck, then the different capability you have with this new DSSV suspension combined with the boron skid plates and those side rocker panels. Let's check out how this looks. Here we go, continuing up the hill climb to a more technical section. Oh my gosh, the bumps are crazy. This angle is crazy. <laughs> Look at that wall to the right, man. The 360 wow. cameras are helping, but still, it takes a lot of driver confidence. And the vehicle's just able to do it. I can't believe this. Fully one pedal driving right now, no brake. Okay, just pulled over for one of our pit stops on this journey. Now, my biggest takeaway right now is how versatile this truck is behind me because you don't have the concerns or the intimidation with a bigger vehicle going through these uh, terrain climbs and, and trails. Having a smaller truck like this, but not losing any of the off-road capability gives you a valley that I think is really important. It makes sense why this whole space, this market is growing so fast. We're back with Zane. Appreciate it, man. We're in a you different bet. version now, the, a red one. Yep. For the ton of fun, I think the mode to stay in would be uh, Baja, right? I think that's a good choice. That's a good choice. Let's do it. One more. Then we'll say confirm. Yes. Now, as I mentioned earlier, you do have 310 horsepower. So it's not going to be the fastest Baja vehicle to rally across the desert, but you can keep momentum up high having such incredible suspension because even right now rolling the entire composure, it feels so just smooth. It's not beating us up. <laughs> it's so fun getting out of the cities, man and explore in the wilderness. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like we're racing in the midst. I know. 300, 400 you don't need a ton of horsepower, man. You just need a composed suspension system. It so feels like a sports car out here. Are you kidding me? These whips are perfectly placed too. A little bit of a big one right here. Good thing I saw that ahead of time. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> Baja mode, what it's doing, it looks like. Uh, we are in four wheel drive, but the RPMs, the entire throttle mapping, it's been changed to keep the vehicle more lively. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway I'm noticing with the suspension system is how smooth it is on each compression. Some vehicles, you feel like you're getting beaten up right now. We're taking these pretty fast. You have such a high clearance angle on the front end. You can pick, pick up some speed through these whoops. It's comfortable. It 
It's a total toy, dude. Oh my gosh! Dude, how is it so composed it's through all this? <laughs> it's a total toy! Driving this truck right now in the desert, I, I can't stop smiling. I think this is a perfect truck for someone who just wants to have an off-road adventure toy that isn't gonna hold them down too much. So like, like the best buyer bracket I would say for this, it, it's gonna be a younger person yeah. who has a calling for the outdoors. They might surf, they might have some other uh, toys they wanna bring with them and um, just come out here and not be held down. I think it's definitely gonna be a, a younger person's off-road toy. I think the whole mid-size segment is filling up like that. Then you'll have the, the older individuals or people with families that want to bring a 18,000 pound boat assembly <laughs> to the beach, then off-road. That's why you buy the Silverado uh, ZR2 HD. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, it does help me out, and subscribe for much for great content coming out your way. Uh, I'll see all of you in the next episode.